Okay, so the today's unit I have chosen is a computer systems and software, and that's a very basic unit to be taught in uh, any level. And what I believe that uh, the sequence uh, of these units in level four, let's say computer systems and software and information management information systems, relational database systems, system analysis and design, information systems, theory and practice, software engineering, e-commerce, computer programming. So from all of them, like, you know, in the first year of any uh, uni, uh, you know, course, or first year of graduation, the mandatory and basic unit is the computer systems and software. Sometimes it is also known as the introduction to computers. Have you heard about the introduction to computers by Peter Norton? Uh, no, I, no. Can't, I can't say I have. Okay, so note down that introduction to computers by Peter Norton is basically the one of the best book being referred and being, you know, uh, used at all over the world in order to understand the computer. So what happens? Uh, for example, from the definitions of memory, from the definitions of the computer, from the definitions of the software and hardware, it takes you towards the, you know, a little bit depth, depth and some, uh, you know, a kind of brief introduction about the various fields of computer science, various fields of the IT. Yeah. So yeah, okay. we assume yeah, we assume that, for example, if you uh, um, uh, you if you have already studied lots of concepts in your own, you know, certifications, but for a while we keep those on uh, one side, and let's say we revise the concepts, which are you know uh, concepts which we have to complete in the in this unit. So it says that. Learning outcome one is understand the components of the computer system. Nowadays, it has been, you know, a kind of change into the technology. Then probably after some years, the desktops might be discontinued. Yeah, desktops might be discontinued and probably uh, like, you know, a very portable, you know, devices, even the laptops, you know, Obviously, the laptops are the replacement for the desktops, but in the offices, they only have, uh, you know, a one unit. Like at the moment, you must have seen, you know, the Apple desktops, everything, you know, CPU and, you know, uh, uh, all other components are behind the uh, monitor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. there's... there's there's not much to uh, the, the Apple user when you look at them. It's all sort of... Like, like means, yeah, I mean, like, you know, even they are using on the desk. They are using the desktop, but you can't find the CPU, the casing, the tower of the computer anymore. Nah. Yeah? So what would yeah, happen? Yeah. Our new generations may, may forget, you know, or may, may not know in future, that what is the actual computer yeah yeah I so, yeah yeah you agree yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, um but the other thing as well is with uh with with the modern stuff is it, it doesn't go wrong so much either so there's no need to open it up and change parts and and, and, up, and upgrade them because quite often yeah. on, on systems you can't upgrade them can you Sorry, you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, my my point of view is that for the understanding purpose, our young generations may not see the desktops anymore. Yeah, but yeah. from the theory point of view, it is most important that every IT learner should know that how the computer is organized designed and what are the components and how they were initially yeah yeah, yeah? so yeah and what was your question 
Oh, it, it, I, no, I didn't have a, I didn't have a question. It was just, um, yeah. Um, it, it was just um, a, a comment about the uh, the fact that um, a lot of um, computers now you can't um, you, you can't actually open them up and fix them. They're they're almost sealed, um, and they get, for example. Um, um, Phones are very difficult to change parts on. You need special tools and stuff, um, and it, it, sometimes it's not worth fixing them. Yeah, that's also one of the uh, also one of the uh, you know possibility and uh, maybe advantage or disadvantage. And uh, but obviously, so let us start from the uh, very beginning of this unit and. Uh, uh, so understand the components of computer system, yeah? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So let's say we start from the definition. In simple words, any device that can compute or calculate is known as a computer, yeah? I will be going, you know, faster and obviously though, as I already explained, that you must have, re you know, studied these things, you know, maybe 100 times, but in order to give a just a revision, we will be going through and will try to recall the history that how computers were made and how they came into existence in action. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So it, the device that access data in one farm and process it to produce a data in other farm. That's also the definition. Computer is capable of processing the data and information. Yeah. And for example, if we ask, you know, uh, kids are young generation to define the computer, I'm not sure that they might define exactly what the computer is. Probably they know that how to use the computer very efficiently. They know they try and they know how to install, but they won't be probably uh, able to explain a computer is a device that can, that can compute or calculate. Calculate. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, y you are because it it does tend to be that um. I I think over the years com computers have pretty much become um, mainstream, yeah. and yeah, but actually forget um, how they yeah. work and what they do. Yeah, but do do or what is what is the definition indeed? Yeah. Well, so any information fed to it can be arranged and presented in more easily and understandable and useful form. Yeah. The, these definitions really, you know, if someone is given a blank paper. Try write, write, try to write something about the computer. They won't be asked to write about the programs, but computer itself can have some a significant definition since the beginning. So these are the definitions and main components of the computer are hardware and software. Yeah, and if we yeah. ask someone that define the hardware, what do you think? Probably they might not say, but the actual definition is computer is hardware uh, hardware consists of electronic devices parts that you can see and touch as well like a software you cannot touch the com the software indeed so the term device refers to any piece of hardware used by the computer such as any keyboard mouse modem but the software is also called a program consists of organized set of instructions Normally, when when you know in the small MCQs or small questions, it has been asked like, "What is the software?" Let's say it's a you know device that you can touch, or the correct answer might be a set of instructions, a very simple definitions. Yeah, that that yeah, in, yeah. in competitive exams like GCSE, computer science. Yeah, these questions have been asked in this way. Yeah, so which controls yeah. the computer? Yeah, so just just assume that we are just revising. If you have studied, it's fine. If you haven't studied, so out of this revision, you will be able, we will be able to, uh, you know, recall this. And obviously, you have to include these terminologies and concepts into the assignments that you will be doing, you know, for this unit and rest of the unit. So, set of instructions, hardware. Now we come to the hardware, CPU, central processing unit. What happens? Like uh, it, the term was misinterpreted, like uh, you know, the box, the casing of the tower, or a tower itself for the desktop. Yeah. 
sometimes you know people they call it a, okay this is a monitor and this is a cpu How, did you ever use this term the cpu for the casing um i the, the i've always used the the the, uh, the term the tower um for, for for that but i have um i have heard people say the the the, uh, the cpu yeah exactly yeah so yeah. because they consider there's a box is a, you know is a main computer but cpu is basically the central processing unit like a microprocessor so it has uh, on a superficial you know understanding it is a control unit and uh, it has a mem memory unit and arithmetic and logic unit so three you know components they make up a processor and even when you talk about the ram uh, right so ram also becomes the part of the cpu no normally we insert the ram in, into slots yeah but yeah. the cpu max uh, you know is built on the basis of control unit main memory unit and arithmetic and logic unit so control unit controls transfer between the cpu and the memory and the cpu and input output devices arithmetic and logic unit performs uh, you know the arithmetic like you know uh, adding and you know subtracting multiplication division and logical comparison like less than greater than equal not equal they are being done by the arithmetic and logic unit and memory holds instruction data intermediate and final results of processing whatsoever and the system board or motherboard itself connects all the components of the computer and allow peripheral devices for input output secondary storage and whatever you know that they are connected on the motherboard yeah so yeah. now we come to the sorry you know i'm going little bit quick if whenever you want me to you know big, uh, stop on any topic you can you know interrupt me yeah no no the the the, the pace um is is perfect uh, um on on this particular bit yeah it, it's it's fine okay yeah so i if there will be anything needs to be explained in detail then i would definitely you know uh try to be slower and uh, uh okay so memory types normally we say that it's a two types of memory main memory or primary memory or secondary memory or backing storage devices so can i quickly ask what are the two types of the main memory um the the, the two types of uh, memory is like um uh, vol volatile memory which be which basically is um when the power goes from the the actual computer all the, all the memory's gone yeah and there is like a per uh, what i was class is sort of permanent uh, um, storage like the hard drive where you save the files and that they're, they're always on there um providing the hard drives in, in good state and you know it can it can spin up and power up now see i have classified the memory types into main memory or primary memory okay and i'm asking what are the two types of the main memory okay um the main memory um if you for example if you don't look at the answer uh, yeah and obviously the second type of memory is not here uh, in this slide what are the two yeah, okay. types of i i understand what you said the the two types are um so ram and uh read only memory exactly yeah exactly one is a random access memory and another is a read only memory and what is the read only memory um the read uh the, the read only memory an example of that would be something like a bios chip um exactly yeah exactly on, on, yeah. on a motherboard or or it or it could be um also on um the motherboard on a tablet where you have a, a small little piece of software where um it needs to stay the, the same basically all the time it, it can't yeah. change the same sequence yeah, of yeah. so so that's not the one of the example but that is the example the ram random ex access memory that's a volatile and it holds the programs and instructions as long as the computer is running and if the power goes off then you know all data is erased and rom is the uh, read only memory 
and it stores the firmware yeah the bios is basically firmware the information about the computer hardware configuration everything is stored into it so the second type of main memory is the rom and obviously the rom has a two types like a pram programmable rom and erasable programmable rom so for sometime what happens the companies allow you to uh, reprogram the particular you know rom memory and sometimes they don't allow you to reprogram or erase it and that's only you know uh, the fix for example what i believe like in our desktop computers and we update the roms yeah and uh, probably in mobile phones they don't give, um, give permission to erase or you know uh, reprogram the roms make sense yeah yeah so now secondary memory secondary memory uh, is further divided into two types sequential and random can you give an example of sequential um would that be like um uh um in in a a, a tower or, or a laptop now my question is any kind of sequential access you know memory I, i'm not entirely sure on that one to be honest i think okay. so. yeah no yeah, worries I think yeah this comes it comes from the kind of you know old age uses that's basically the tape drives oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. what happen if you had a you know audio cassette yeah or video cassette yeah to be played on the audio tape or on the vcr video cassette recorder then basically the data is storage is stored on to the on uh, the magnetic tapes into the blocks so that is a kind of sequential memory make sense the yeah, okay. order of accessing is sequential it is not you know a random yeah so yeah yeah okay so make sense so now the magnetic storage and obviously the uh now we come further the into the classification of the storage into magnetic and optical so the type of secondary storage is like a sequential and random and then uh out of them yeah the in like you know that within the sequential are random which are two types of the technologies one is the magnetic and other is the optic op optical so you can store either of the sequential or random into magnetic or optical so magnetic one are magnetic tapes diskettes hard disks and high capacity floppy disks yeah you must have seen the photographs of the uh, floppy drive disks yeah in yeah. old yeah. yeah olden days it used to be the floppy drives then primary type of optical storage like a cd rom dvd rom and then obviously the cd recordable and cd rewritable things yeah and the fully electronic storage are the flash drive or ssd drive yeah yeah so okay. obviously the difference between the flash drive and the ssd drive is uh, so what would be the difference between the flash drive and the ssd drive um the the the, the flash drive is is normally um like a, a sort of a, a small uh device a usb type of device an ssd drive is the sort of thing that you would have maybe in a in a sam or a nas or a laptop or a desktop um or even just a a, a standard server yeah um, is that is that the sort of thing you you're looking for like means the quick answer may be like a flash drive and uh, you know the ssd drive looks like uh, same technology flash drive can be said like it's a removable and uh, the ssd drive solid state drive would be used as a hard drive and uh, pro the operating system could be loaded from the ss drive ssd drive yeah 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 and now memory measuring units can i ask a question uh, you know without looking at this what is the smallest addressable unit of memory 
Um, it is. It's either a zero or a one. Sorry. It's it's either on, on or off. My question is, what is the smallest addressable unit of memory? Ah, uh, it's a byte. Yes, the answer is correct. So the bit is the smallest non-addressable unit of storage. Yeah. So bit, yeah. and it is uh, which a computer recognizes. Bit is an abbreviation of binary digit, which may be on or off. It also represents zero or one. Nibble is a group of four bits, and byte is the smallest addressable unit of storage capable to accommodate one character, and the character may be an alphabet number or whatsoever. And word is the consequent two bytes. It's called the 16 bits. Double word. Consequent byte 32 bits. Kilobyte is basically the big unit of memory generally represented by KB, but it is never one uh, 1000, but it is always 1024. Do you understand this? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm familiar with this. The only one that I've never actually seen bef before is that. Uh, on that previous slide is the um, the second one, the uh, nibble, is it? Yeah, nibble is, again, these are, as I told you, that these are the terminologies used in previous days. Yeah, like it this yeah. says a double word consequent uh, by 32 bits are called double word. The term is used in 80386 and 80486 processors. Yeah, so these terminologies yeah. have been used in the older computers. I myself, yeah. uh, you know, witnessed and used, you know, 286 computers at my home, 386 computers, computer at my home as well. Yeah. So in yeah. 19, 1998, we used to have a 286 computer and then we had the, you know, uh, travel, uh, you know, to get it upgrade into 386 and then, uh, you know that there was the next computer was 486 and then the Pentium 1 came in, then Pentium 2 came in, then Pentium 3 came in, Pentium 4 came in and then uh, uh, you know dual core came in, then core 2 duo, then core uh, i3, core i5, core i7 and don't know where that will stop. So that's the history of like computing uh, the processors. So kilobyte is 1 KB is 1024 because it is a multiple uh, of 8. So 8, 16, 256, 5, 12, and that's making up a 1024 uh, blocks of bytes. And uh, they are making like a kilobyte, then megabyte, then gigabyte, and all these are the kind of calculations. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Then we come to the for the standard methods of input like uh, keyboard and mouse, then the mouse are, are have a different variants like a trackballs, trackpads, integrated point devices like a touchpad. Yeah, we have on laptops. Then alternative devices for the handheld, optical input devices, auto, audio, video, multiple input devices, devices for the hand like a pens, a pen drive a touch screens, game controllers, they all come into the category of input devices. Yeah. For example, uh, yeah. yeah, for example, if we have a pen drive and if we ask some, you know, candy is any uh, child of like a school yeah, or college, what is the type of this device? Probably they might not say, uh, they might answer wrong. They don't know that whether it's an input device or an output device. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe not hundred percent. So this comes under a classification of certain input output devices, and and the output devices like a monitor, printer, speaker, plotter, multimedia projectors. These are the output devices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Peripheral device. A peripheral device is a device is a computer device such as keyboard, printer. That's not part of essential computer. So apart from CPU, 
any device that is connected to the uh, you know cpu like to the motherboard these are called the peripheral devices and the type can be internal or external external may be the mouse keyboard printer internal may be cd ram and like a modem or these things then network types local area network wide area network wireless local area network metropolitan area network storage area network campus area network personal area networks so normally the lane and wan are the two primary and best known categories of networks while the others have emerged with the technology advances so look you know can very I, well yeah i'm sorry yeah um sorry can i ask you a question about the yeah. metropolitan area network yeah um, who who uses that because i've heard i've heard of it before but i've never come across it i've come across all the others yeah but i i never i've never known who who would use it uh maybe governments might use it the reason like uh, let's say uh the council all the council offices of the county yeah or city uh like a metropolitan level like if it is a london yeah okay. and, uh, yeah, uh, yeah because yeah, they, yeah. yeah i understand that that's fine thanks okay so that because the range would be only the let's say uh the metropolitan a kind of a particular big city yeah yeah okay yeah so the but the well known the normally they call like a lane and when they are the most of them yeah so yeah. Local area network. Then some definition about the wide area network, and then you know other types, wireless uh, local area network, metropolitan area network, and these things. And basically, these are called the ranges of the you know uh, network. However, if we look at the internet, then internet is the basically the net of networks provided you are connected to each other via internet yeah and if you are not yeah. connected via internet then you fall into basically the a network yeah so network may be the wireless area network sorry the local area network yeah or it can be the wireless area network or it can be a metropolitan area area network but remember that if the network is spawned is spread over even in the city yeah and it is not connected via internet it is not connected via internet then it would become a that particular type of network otherwise it would be internet okay yeah yeah, yeah. like vpn like a virtual private networks they may be using like uh, used by the metropolitan area network yeah and uh, mm -hmm. but the important point is to consider that the connectivity is only the network not the internet mm -hmm. okay yeah like campus yeah, within yeah. the campus the all the all the peers all the users would be connected to a kind of you know uh, segments of the network for example uh, a, com a campus is spread over uh, you know one mile then probably there could be some bridges uh, or the routers into different places and the routers would be connected to each other and they they make a you know a segment of the network yeah yeah, yeah. so that's the you know the definitions behind and further really depends how we want to go ahead into the detail but so far like we are just you know going through the definitions only here yeah yeah hardware hardware we are talking about the networking in infrastructure so into the networking infrastructure we use hardware and the hardware or the hardware infrastructure is basically the hardware and the software resources of the entire network that en enables the network connectivity communications operations and management of an ent entire network it provides the communication path and services between users and processes application services and external networks 
or the internet. So everything which, which contributes towards the usage of the hardware or any equipment or software, it, it comes under under the networking infrastructure. Yeah. 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 For the, the networking hardware, like a router, switches, lane cards, wireless routers and cables, these are the, uh, you know, hardware equipment. And obviously they have, uh, you know, their own advantages and disadvantages. You know, they have their own characteristics. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we are not going into the detail, the difference between the switch and the hub, but just listing out here. And softwares, the networking softwares like a network operations and management, operating system, firewalls, network security applications. So these are the softwares like a firewall in the Windows is kind of networking software. Yeah. Yeah. Then network performance and management software that gives you the power to monitor and manage your network, like a performance monitoring, bandwidth analysis, IP addressing management, troubleshooting tools, and many more softwares related come under the networking software. Then we talk about the limitations of computer. One of the big limitation, like you know, the computer is working like a human brain. It gives us, you know, uh, calculations. We can compute or calculate anything. We can do nowadays lots of things, but computer cannot think itself. Can the computer think? What do you say? So, so, sorry, uh, no, no, they can't. No, it, it would be good if they could think. Um, I guess, uh, well, at the moment they can't, but maybe with artificial intelligence they might be able to. Yes, but the definition of the artificial intelligence is that they don't think, but they only can be trained. Yeah, like you yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, okay, they can only be trained and the other thing is that computers cannot decide and even if it is an artificial intelligence and then for example there is a robot in front of you if you are throwing a ball into uh, you know uh, towards the robot and it is catching either from the other side from the left or right with the hand left hand or the right hand the robot doesn't decide itself but the programs and the rules behind the you know uh, those uh, you know sensors they they the rules allow them to take some decision yeah but the robot doesn't take itself anything okay yeah um, re really yeah i i i uh, i understand it it doesn't matter really does it how um how good the technology gets it's still going to need yeah so a human a human being to actually tell it what to do um yeah. it can't make make decisions i i don't think uh, personally i don't think that day will will ever come where a computer is made and then all of a sudden it can just think for itself. It's it's impossible, isn't it? It's going to need human. Obviously, yeah, because it doesn't have, a, you know, uh, any natural brain. However, in yeah, neural yeah. networks, there is a subject called networks in the artificial intelligence. They try the create of artificial neurons. They train the artificial neurons. Yeah. And but yeah. obviously whatever has been fed to them, they do accordingly. So simply, there is a kind of IQ question. Yeah, computers can't think. Computers can't decide. Probably, you know, some might, some, uh, someone, you know, any a new uh, beginner might be given the question, and they might think that computer can think. If say, let's say, a robot is, let's say, catching a ball, then select the correct answer. That computer decided. And there's another expression: computer can't think, computer can't take decisions. So definitely, the de the answer would be the computer can't decide anything on their own. Yeah, simple. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then computer can't express their ideas. They don't have any ideas. They don't have any, you know, uh, life. They are everything is a machine. Computers can't implement by themselves. Yeah, they have been, you know, given chance 
are to implement certain policies only then oh, that's uh, that's all about the you know capabilities of computers then next next topic is expandable systems ability of a computer system to accommodate additions to its capacity or capabilities for example hardware point of view expandability may include the larger hard disk and more memory faster video uh, board from a software point of view it may include the ability to support more network users greater number of its from a uh, website uh, visitors and uh, extensibility and scaling these are also terms for the expandable systems why because we only needed to give the definition uh, you know need to define like uh, like we were you know discussing about the limitations of the computer systems and designing of the expandable systems and device types so at this level at the introductory levels we only need to see what are the ex expandable devices so the expandable devices is the capability to scale the system capability to extend the system so if you are increasing the storage into the system then you are expanding yeah and if you are oh. allowing more, yeah if you are allowing the more number of users then you are allowing the scalability of the usage of the system that is not we are not going into the more detail anymore yeah yeah i'm i'm just going to i'm just going to make a note of that a minute um what what you've just said that i've i've got the um the course spec here the print off of it in front of me yeah um, I'm just making notes on it. I'm just going to make that note. Be, um, what what you've just said on there. If you just give me two seconds. Um, yeah, 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 make a note. Yeah. Could I open the PPT slide as well? Are you are you trying to write everything about? No, that's fine. No, no, no. That's fine. I've I've made the note. Okay. Okay. Thank. So you noted? Yeah, I've done. I've done the notes. That's fine. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. No worries. And uh, you you will have access to this PowerPoint slide as well in the Moodle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you got your username and password? I have. Yeah. Um. I've had a good look over uh, the Moodle site. Um. At the the beginning section there of the all the little um helpful sheets and the um guides and, and various bits and pieces. I had I had a look at that last night. Yeah. Uh, just more to, just to, yeah. Uh, uh, more specifically you will have uh, all these lecture slides accessible over there as well as link to the recording of this session as well. At the moment oh, yeah at the moment yeah. the link to recording is given uh, like a previous session then with other students yeah and uh, but probably what i would do i would include the today's sessions recording with date yeah and uh, then you would be able to listen to the particular recording the one that we did you and me and uh, will be more you know useful for you yeah great yeah yeah so yeah. and you know uh, you can quickly access this stuff and obviously the uh, assignment brief as, uh, briefs as well over there so let me know if you have any difficulty accessing the any material or if you have any question or if you have any suggestion to carry out you know the how we should go uh, you know the way and uh, you are most welcome to uh, you know and give your feedback at any time. I ha I actually have a question for you now. Um, it's it's just the it's just just one question on on all of this. Yeah. You you, you mentioned um a while ago about a book by Pete. Was it Peter Norman? No, uh, there's a Peter Norton. Uh, let me write it for you. I I'm just yeah I'm just going to write down um. But the reason I ask is, is, is there a copy of that book going to be put yes. on the website? 
Do I have to buy that? I'm not sure about the copies, but the PowerPoint slides are free to download. Okay. So here it is on Peter Norton's introduction to computers. Okay, excellent. That's fine. That, that's um, that's all I need to know. I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have a good look at that. Um, yeah. It sounds it sounds interesting. So it's a sorry. I thought it was a book. It's a website. Yeah. No, that's a definitely a book. That they said that it has a paper copy as well, but. Uh, the lecture slides are also very much informative and uh, you can you know uh, go through the same things uh, which for example i prepared the lecture uh, according to the number of topics but however you can go through all of them and uh, that's really good there are some quizzes as well and uh, it is much more interesting and uh, i would recommend everyone every computer scientist at any any level must study and memorize it and i i you know assure you that in any competitive exam no one can you know make you answerless i mean you will have answer to every question and you will be a competent candidate in order to be a knowledgeable about the computer science that's good. That's good to know. Thank, thanks for that. So yeah. I wish you all the best, um, and uh, you go through this as well as the lecture slides. And uh, how about tomorrow? And uh, uh, you know, uh, the timing should be same. Um, would I? I don't know um, what your schedule is. Would um, a day next week be okay, or or are you only available tomorrow? No, uh, you mean on Monday? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Let's let's you know uh, keep it on Monday. So would you be able to uh, you know uh, communicate it by email? Yeah, that's fine. Um, is there, just just whilst I've, I've got you now, is there any particular time that you can do? Is it is the morning best? Um, anything would be fine. Yeah, and uh, the provided you know that. Uh, I can confirm to you a day before that you know whether I need to schedule anything in the morning or in the afternoon. So what we do, and uh, uh, I would let you know by email by tomorrow afternoon. Would it be okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I will. Um, yeah. What what I'll do is I will. Um, I'll book um, a room out um, at work, and I'll do the next bit. Um, yeah. From I'll I'll tell you why part of the um, I'm I'm okay today, yeah. but my my internet connection is not the fastest. Um, yeah. This is okay. I'm not sure whether there is any lag on it or not. But at work I've got better internet connection. Yeah. Um, thinking maybe about doing these lectures um, from work. Okay. So just propose me what time you prefer on the Monday. Um. Uh, let me just have a look. I've oh, just two minutes. I'll just check the calendar. Um, make sure I'm not double booked somewhere else. Monday the sixteenth. Um, words. Um. Uh, words sort of like uh, I don't know, like ten o'clock be okay. 10 or 11? 11 should be fine, yeah. Yeah, 11. So let's see, let's, you know, uh, we tentative, tentatively, um, you know, uh, fix around 11 o'clock on Monday then. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. So yeah. I would I would create a schedule on the join me, and uh, if anything will be changed, then I would let you know. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. So, um, no yeah, yeah. I'll just, so I'll just I put you on Monday. Yeah. yeah, see you on Monday. Okay. Okay, eleven o'clock. That's fine. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye.